film at Shop Talks. Uh, we're going to look at screenwriting, directing, and producing because the next dynamic couple here next to us, yes, they are married. So they are in the industry as all three of these different uh, job uh, designations. So first of all, Cornei van Rooyen. Hello. Welcome to Film It. Uh, if you can just chat into the mic. Hello. So, <laughs> Cornet yeah. has over 60 hours of content that is produced for SABC, BBC, National Geographic, CakeNet, and Mnet. So he studied directing at screenwriting at AFTA. AFTA is a film school. There's one in Cape Town and Joburg, and I think in Durban as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, I he did movies, uh, Hollywood in my eyes, for, um, for CakeNet. And that won the Audience Choice Award. Um, he took part in the Silver Scarum Fierce, uh, four different features, uh, Sisters, Lente, Vasilinki, and him and his wife, um, Renee, also produced and directed uh, Alice Malan for CakeNet. Which brings me to Renee van Rooyen. Okay, Renee is also a screenwriter, producer, director, so you have to wear a lot of hats in this industry. Absolutely. And uh, she, died, she studied at AFTA as well, not at the same time, but they both are graduates of AST, AFTA. Then she won Best Director and Best Picture for CakeNet Silver Scan Fierce 2012. Um, also, Hollywood in My Eyes, Vasilinki, and then co-producer, director of Alice Malan. Welcome to Film It, guys. <laughs> okay. So we really... Happy to see you guys here. Um, as I told you, Filmit is a platform for the young voices of South Africa. Now, the first question that I would like to know um, is how long does it take to write a screenplay? My first screenplay took me 11 years. So it, it's, it's really just about keep going. And your screenplay almost have to grow up as you're growing up. So it's, it's really, you grow up, yeah, you, you come of age with your screenplay in, in a lot of ways. But it doesn't need to take that long. It, I just, for me it was, I just had to keep going and keep going. And, and you have to keep believing in yourself um, to keep going for that long. Absolutely. And also your ideas change over years. So the first idea I had was actually the last idea I st stuck with, but I went all over not believing in myself. So it's really the hardest thing to do is write because it challenges your internal fears the most. And you've got to go through that process of having to believe in yourself when there's no one else because writing is alone. You sit alone and I would say yeah, any writer has to ha you know, work on their, <laughs> their self-belief as much as possible. Then it doesn't have to take 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, and uh, Renee? Yeah, I think uh, I think the tricky thing about it is, is uh, you know, the screenplay might be faster in the writing, so we'll talk about how that process happens. Um, it's getting that screenplay funded is wh why it takes so long. Um, and, and because in that funding process, you are rewriting the draft. I think he's talking about Hol Hollywood to Mehais, and he started with it in 2007, and we, or 2006, around then, we produced or secured financing 2012. What was also happening at that time in South Africa, films weren't being made. So it was one of the first pre-sale project, or first sale projects that CakeNet took on. Okay. So financing didn't exist at the time for, for feature films. It was impossible to get financed, which everything has changed now. There's so much um, content being asked at the moment. The thing we're talking about now, screenwriting, the thing we can't find is screenwriters. That's why we as directors are writing our own content. There's no screenwriters in this country almost. So if you want to be a screenwriter, there's so much work out there. It's, it's boring, Rain. Mm, <laughs> it's crazy. Wonderful. Yeah, it's Netflix is asking, CakeNet is asking, Mnet is asking, Disney Plus is coming. It's, if you want to be a screenwriter, there's a lot of opportunity. So that's it. we're talking about feature films as well. Yes. And that industry is also like, done a little bit of a nosedive, but t television, there's a lot of work in. So that's uh, like feature film takes a long time because financing takes so long. Um, okay, okay but for these guys now, they have the opportunity, they, they need to produce a film this year. So they all submitted their ideas, which were judged, and then they're the top 20. 
So they've got the idea. So how do they start in terms of figuring out, um, to give you an example, I would start with a, a big board with a lot of pictures and because I'm visual. But what's a way to start? What is the, how, do you, how do you structure um, the screenplay from the images in your mind into words and then those words into images again? I, I think Kone has a nice story about that and then I'll add on to it because short films is a whole different process than writing feature films. But yeah. I don't know what my story is, but I have <laughs> oh, 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 the thing is, in school I was, I mean, probably I'm still extremely dyslexic, so it, it, for me, writing didn't come naturally um, at all and it still doesn't in, in a lot of ways. But I, my first screenplay in film school, I drew, drew in pictures. I didn't write because I was scared of words. So I, was, I drew pictures in order to tell them this is my story. But for me, the process is my first draft, just write, just get it out. doesn't matter what structure it is. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Just get something on page because if, if you don't have those five pages, or ten pages full, you don't have anything. So my, my advice is just write and get that 10 pages out of this 10 minute films huh? that you do. Five to 10 minutes, Five yes. Five to 10, so you, and then from there on, you can start structuring and putting stuff into, um, into order. Because the thing is, that first picture you drew as a child, after society has influenced you, you can never go back to that, that almost innocent purity. So my advice is just write that first draft without anyone's input or too much um, influence from society and then you'll always have that and that is the rawest, the purest form of, of something that came out of you and then let people influence you. But after people started influencing you, um, it's very difficult to become raw again. Um, so for me, that's what I do. So when I adapted a screenplay, I would just go and just write. And I normally do my first, I would do my first draft, I would write in two weeks. But then the third draft will take me four months. And then it will get longer, but my first one will always be as fast as possible. Because you, you write that fear out of you. That's amazing, writing the fear out of you. There's, there's something really great that happens when you pin it's on paper, I realize. When you pen it on paper, when you get those ideas out there, Renee? Yeah, because that's the th first thing anyone will ever ask you is what, what, do, what can you show? What can they read? So if you picture a story, everyone has stories. There's so many stories, but it, no one's actually taking the effort to write them into a screenplay. That's the difference between cracking it and not cracking it. Without a screenplay, you have nothing, and no one is going to be interested. So that's the first part of it. Short films is a whole different ball game because... You're trying to tell a story in five to ten minutes. So we can talk about structure, feature films, and there's a lot of, you know, you have to get training in that. We'll talk about that later because it's very specific. It's not just, but short films, you know, um, it's a whole different ball game. I think there's two things that's always very important. I think in short films is basically you need something to hook the audience. Like when they start, you start watching it the first two minutes, one minute actually. These days, 30 seconds because people watch so much content. Yeah. You have to hook the audience. There must be something that they watch it. They're like, I really want to see what's going to happen in the end of the story. And then it just needs to build to some reveal at the end, something that surprises them by the end. Whereas feature films, we can elaborately discuss how complex that is, but a short film just needs those two little things, uh, uh, something interesting that's going to hook them, um, and then hold them, 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 and then re just release with something interesting and surprising at the end, um, which is the lack of thing about. And then the th second thing is, we have been influenced so much by America and Europe and everything these days. We can watch content from all over the world, but it has to be very truthful, and we call it authentic to what your experiences are so i would look a lot of times to what what how can you be the most ex authentic or real realist part of you is like draw from what you know we always tell don't t you have to tell what you know because you, otherwise you won't be able to write dialogue because you don't know how that would sound so you have to write from your environment what you know how your peers would yeah. talk or you talk so just tell a story that's very truthful to something that you've experienced i just I'm not sure what was the question, but I, I just just I'm in terms of uh, uh, structure oh, of the scene. The, so, 
what helped me free writing was who is my character, and you just have to say who he is, um, then what does he want? Every character needs to want something, and that want needs to be visible. Um, you need to know that when that character gets that thing, like the ball, or it doesn't matter, or he saves his grandmother from dying, we know what it looks like when he got it. So who's my character? What does he want? What is standing in front of him? What like, m is making it difficult for him to get it? Um, and then the biggest thing that's the most important for any writer is why do we care? So if he gets... If he doesn't get what he wants, do we really care? Then we're not going to care about the character. So it's got to be really important that what happens to the character if he doesn't get what he wants? And if, it's, if he dies, then we know, okay, cool, we're going to care, care about him. But it, it needs to be something that the audience, why do we really care about the character? So it's who is he, what does he want, and what's going to stand in front of him so he doesn't get it? So if you can answer those three questions, then you have a story. And then the fourth one is then the other one I said, the stakes. What happens if he doesn't get it? Okay. So that's, that, is, that is the structure of, well, any story any really. Story. Any story, whether it's a short film or a feature film, is there's something in the way of the protagonist, the main character's way of getting what they want. Now, you refer to a hook um, just as an explanation to you. A hook is uh, an example for you. It would be in Finding Nemo at the beginning where all of Nemo's brothers and sisters dies and his mother dies and everybody wants to see what happens to this little, little special fish with the little fin. And everybody's going, oh my goodness, I want to see. And you're sitting there for two hours and then you cry at the end. Okay. Yeah. And they meet each other. So that is the hook. Something needs to happen at the beginning of the film. You can't ease into it. Something needs to happen. Okay. That, that is really great ad advice just to get that together um, uh, for screenwriters. Thank you so much. Then, like, I love making food. But I hate baking because I can never s decide when my cake is ready because you can't see inside the cake. How do you know when a script or a, screen, uh, a, a, a screenplay is ready? Sure, that's a very difficult question. You're never going to know, I think. We always say just go into production because... You know, when the time when the actors get there, they give their input. And so, but there is a process. Um, we, we, just in terms of the process we take, undertake now, and just kind of try, you can maybe relate it back to short films. But you go through the process of writing it, and then the important thing is to get feedback after you've gotten that special draft before you get any feedback in. And, and then you just have to rework the story. Um, but it's so difficult, you know, we write sometimes up to 12, 12 to 20 drafts of a screenplay and then we go into production still not feeling um, that it's ready because it, writers in their being are a very insecure humans and you never feel that what you're doing is good enough. It's going to be, if you ever write in your life, that's going to be your biggest obstacle. Um, so you go in, um, I think you just have to follow the processes. You need to really, really work hard on, on the on the basic things like the hook and the character and the want and the stakes. If you get those those elements in and, and you've got enough feedback and people are saying, oh, the story is interesting, I like it, then, then it's good. And then get your actors to also, and your crew who's working with you, your friends to give you feedback. That all helps um, mm. to give the... Um, um, yeah, to, to make sure that the screenplay is at its best place. The tricky thing about a screenplay is like, um, where, where, where is you direct, you can always fix it in the edit, you can always change the scenes, but the script, when it's done, it's done, you're shooting it. So there's no, there's nothing that can be changed when you get to say too much of it. Um, so, so that's always the tricky thing about it. Um, so, th and, and the thing about screenplays is you almost, you know, in the edit as well, like s certain story elements will change as well. So the screenplay, um, there's some writers that have said in the past, you know, it's always developing almost. Mm. You have it in the beginning, you have your final draft, which you finish, but then the director gives their input, and then and you sit in the edit, and the story takes on a new form again. Um, so, so, yeah, it's a very difficult question. Um, <laughs> the best advice I have is make sure that when you've gone through the processes that you get feedback from other people um, 
t uh, on where the, the story is just interesting. They will read it and tell them, okay. Or if it's boring, you know it's not going to work. Um, so it's important for you guys, you have a teacher or some mentor that helps you, let them have a look at the script. They can give advice. Show it to friends, show it to parents, if your parents uh, are language, anybody really. Okay. Cornei, uh, sorry, yeah, man. Cornei. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. For me, it's there has to come a point when it's done, when it's finished, and when you feel comfortable to to shoot the script. But um, it even gets rewritten in the edit afterwards. But you, you as a writer, needs to hand it over, um, and then the director will take it further, and the camera persons take it further, and everyone else will then it will, will become you know, organic process. But there is a point where you have to say the script is done. Because um, rewriting, you can overwrite, and you can, you can go places where it's untrue. And I would say, you've got to give yourself a deadline and just finish it and get it done. And then hand it over. And then the rest of, of my problem and Renee's problem is we are directors as well. So you sit with your own script. Um, and I can screw up my script very easily. <laughs> That's not a swear word. <laughs> no, but you can, you can really go and yeah, dig yourself into a hole with your own script if you're directing it. And that's the danger if, 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 if balancing those two hats is not, you know, yeah, killing, killing your script. So, so <laughs> guys, screenwriters out there, you have to, with your group, make a decision. We're going to take the script now. I know there's everybody has opinions, but this is the deadline because we ne still need to make the movie. Yeah. And if you take too long on the script, you're not going to have enough time to produce the film. Okay. <laughs> then you finish the screenplay. Screenplay. And you as the screenwriter has done a lot of them, a lot of the screenwriters are also going to help with the production of the, the, the movie. So now I'm done with my screenplay. What's the first thing you do after that? Um, you guys being directors as well. I, I, I would like to hear your... Yeah, so we call it the f final draft. And then the final draft gets sent out to everyone on your team, whether you're a two-man team or one-man team or four-man team. I don't know how lucky you guys are in terms of that. And then every, every, there's different departments. You've, got, you've spoken to, to that about mm. that, the yes. different departments. That, uh, and then every department with us, it's an elaborate team. But we've got the main sections. You've spoken about that, the director. You've got your production designer who does the sets. It gets sent to the actors who learn their lines. It goes to the wardrobe who chooses the costume and all of that. And all of the de those details need to be in the script. Not exactly what the costumes are, but the important prop. If the character has an important prop like a ball that needs to be in the scene for the story to make sense, make sure that's written in your script. Because then the person that's a, who does the production design, who gets the props and does the sets, know they need to go get that ball, for example. Okay. So there's the actors can start learning their lines. And then the biggest thing from screenwriter... Uh, and then the person is shooting can figure out how they need to interpret the words on screen in the way that they're going to film it because there's various ways that you can shoot a story um and then you know it all, all it goes through all the different departments um um just in terms of uh i, I forgot now what i wanted to say about the oh the, we, 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 it comes from the script to the direct director needs to lead this vision then of the team and that's where when you have when it's so difficult to finish your script the director needs to make a call um, so that the story doesn't get lost. And then he needs to, um, or she needs to, um, navigate all how the story is going to translate through the, all the different departments. It's, it's keeping everyone aligned in one, we call it a vision. So that the story, the idea that was the core theme of the story, or the idea that you wanted to bring out, is like brought through all the different departments, that everything comes together in the end. So that's the most important thing, getting the idea or the vision, yeah. as you said it, getting that out there. Um, in terms of the a screenplay, um, they do um, to kneel and, and plays and uh, at school. But a screenplay has some extra stuff in it that is not the words. As you said, you have to write in the specific prop. And uh, camera shots or stuff like that, what do you write, what do you... 
what is the extra stuff that you write in? It's not just the dialogue, correct? Yeah. Do you explain certain scenes? How do you do that? You, screenplay is about actions. So you will write in the actions of where the character walks, sits, and, and, and all that. But you, you almost have to write, they call it the action verb. Use a verb, but make the verb so that actors understand. You can't say he sits down because he is um, depressed. You have to say he slouches down into his chair. So that makes it more descriptive. Um, so you've got to use actions and not descriptions as much in, in a screenplay. You can describe things a little bit, like what the location looks like, but don't get too descriptive in, in a script with your actions. Um, make it um, visual. Uh, then the biggest thing is your biggest issue with new writers is dialogue. They overwrite dialogue. They tell you in the dialogue, you know, that it's, it's over, what, what's the word? The suffix, um, yeah. Don't tell us what we can see. If, if, if it's got to be visual. Everything in your script has to be visual. Um, we normally go, after your first few drafts, we go through the dialogue and we cut out about 60% of the dialogue because it's, um, you, what is it, show, not tell. Yeah, show, so don't tell. So that's the biggest thing in a, in a script is it's got to be visual. Don't tell us anything. Don't tell us how you're feeling. Show us how you feel. Uh, again, I, just in terms of script, uh, th this is also, uh, we all work throughout in, in, in the entire universe, the world of movie making, we all work on final draft. There's different variations of that, but it's a screenwriting program. Not that you have to have it, but you can Google it and you'll see what it looks like. So all, I don't know if anyone is here familiar with it, but it, it, how what he's saying about action and dialogue, those are the only two things. So it starts with a heading, you call it a slug line. You say, there you have to stipulate where your location is. You say, exterior school, uh, yeah. Day, okay, and then you start the, c the description of or, or the action that's going to happen. A young girl named Layla walks across the school grounds when she sees a s uh, tall monster with glaring eyes standing on the opposite side. Monster, you, know, you give him a heading and his dialogue. Layla, I'm going to eat you. That's the dialogue. Then you write the action again. Layla starts running, knowing she's going to die, and then, okay, just the, or the action you write, and then the dialogue again. So there's a, there's the, the nice thing is there's very specific rules in screenwriting how a screenplay has to be script, uh, formulated. It's, um, if you don't, if you, even in the, in, the, in the professional industry, it has to be done like that. If you're working in America or Europe or wherever, it's 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 called final draft. There's this, there's rules, and anyone can and can look it up. But the program that we use, it just automatically, um, we just press enter, and it just throws our, yeah. throws our um, um, words that we are doing, whether it needs to be an action or a dialogue or a scene heading. It just throws it into that. Okay. So that's what we. So that's right what we. The reason why that is, is because it's got to do with scheduling and everything that happens with your final draft. So say your movie script is done, you've, your final draft, you're seeing it out, there's an entire team just working on production. So all of those little details um, gets thrown into systems for, uh, so that they can break it down. So they know, okay, in my movie there's, uh, I've had three headings, which is three different locations. I, for example, have a heading that said school, I had a heading that said uh, town shop and I had another and then you know okay now I have to go look for those three locations and then in the action there were certain descriptions I have to get a ball as a prop the character needs to walk into a very dark gloomy um, room with a table I need to get that table um, so so those descriptions is necessary and then obviously the dialogue and all of that is going to also show you the cost so all of that is yeah it's a very and then the other thing about why you have to have that format is because we work according to it's one page a minute on screen so whenever we are shooting our, our script and it's in that format it will all almost you know it, it should add, add up to uh, minute. five minutes or ten minutes ten or minute yeah. movie is ten pages. Ten pages. So yeah. we work according to we do feature films, it's a ninety to hundred and twenty minutes that we work on. So we know if we are on a hundred pages in that screenplay format it's gonna be hundred minutes more or less. But okay. yeah, so that's great it. advice to to the finalists is a minute per page. So if you're planning a five minute movie, six minute movie, 
that is what you're going to write on. It, I must say uh, it's wonderful um, to know that there are actually screenwriting apps on Google Play that you guys can download. And um, that will also show you the, the structure of your um, screenplay. But I want to tell you guys that that structure, like they said, show, don't tell. If you can show something, uh, you don't need to explain it in words. It's not like a normal play, okay? It is a screenplay, so we're working with a visual medium film, and I want you guys to show us the movie and not tell us the movie. Yeah, okay. So cool. yeah. I would say if, if you can read, if someone reads your screenplay without the dialogue and still understands what's going on, then your screenplay is working. Can the screenplay change for the students a little bit on set or is it do they have to really strictly stay on the script uh, or can they get in the information from an actor or the dop to maybe create something a little more interesting or a little bit different uh, yeah I, I think it's dangerous for a director to open up too much conversation on set um, because someone has to be the voice of it and it, people can talk and talk and there can be fights and, and all that. And so you've got to have a singular voice. But um, the big thing is sometimes the location is not what you saw in your head and the police chases you away and you have to shoot somewhere else and then you've got to quickly think how to make this, this scene work. Um, and I know with Vasilinki we wanted to shoot in this amazing space and then we couldn't get in and we had to break some barrier and go somewhere else. And, and it just worked out better because it was, more, it was almost more suited for that location because we sat in that location. We thought of how are we going to make this work? And then suddenly it's just more tailor-made for that location. So sometimes it, it is good um, <laughs> when that happens. But, um, but it's not always... As, as a director, you just have to to be mindful of what input you get on, on the day and how you, you navigate it. So the director decides. He says yay or nay, and yes. not too much input because I realize that creates a bit of too, too much noise. Too, yes. many, too many cooks yes. spoils That's the broth. That's exactly that. Okay. I think one of the biggest things that you learn about uh, with directing, it's, it's having the right... Uh, you have to always give answers. People are going to ask you a lot of questions and about the script and what should be happening and that's well that's the learning is is knowing how to make the utmost best decisions for the script but the director needs to make the decision and that decision needs to be dis respected on set and i think give very little we do but that's something that you learn with time is how much input you do get in script you've spent so much time on ri writing the screenplay if all of that's just you know not utilized all the time and energy that you've put into a screenplay and you just suddenly just for the sake of it Jen, if it's based on like emotions or those type of discussion unless there's something that happens like something falls or the location falls through or the actor isn't there then make different plans but maybe just respect the work that you've done and put in it you know and all that effort yeah, first I think the the big thing is on set is actually boring and it's, it's weird but all the planning, all the work, all the stuff really gets done before you get to set. And you ha if you haven't done that, there is no time. And it's very unprofessional then to suddenly on set try and be creative. You've just got to execute your plan on set. That's very important. You can't go and have a debate on set about... Uh, you've, that debate needed to happen two weeks ago because there's so much that sits in your subconscious if you don't work from the subconscious on set you are not working from uh, your gut you're not working from the right place your actors are not working from the right place so if you don't do all the planning and all that two weeks weeks and months beforehand um, then you know you're really gonna if you're on set you're just gonna work from the most obvious choices um, so yes everything will change on set but you need to go in with a very strong plan. If you don't have that strong plan, it will be a very paper-thin movie. So that, that's a great advice. So the work is at home as a team in planning. When you're sitting with your coffee at 11 at night and yeah. you're writing, and that is movie making. Yeah. And then on set, 
you actually just do it. It's the execution. We, we spend, okay, so in terms of feature films, we say spend anything from, it can be very short if you've got funding. Um, our series, Alice Milan, is just a year of writing for 13 episodes, to give you an idea. Uh, other films that we do take, take two to three, four, five years, six years. But then we spend about, uh, we start location wrecking, but for feature film, we do about three months of a solid pre-production. That's us deciding everything creatively from what props is going to be there, how the set is going to look like, everything is planned, everything to the team, nothing changes when you get to set. We start shooting and it's just, you're just ticking off boxes. Mm. It just, all that's really changing is you maybe like, um, you, you've shot listed and you've storyboarded, but you, you're changing the shot because it feels more um, better in this way and the actors' performances you're working a little bit with, but like all of that, the actors have also done their homework months ahead. So it's, uh, it's all about the planning. So pre-production is everything you do ahead, the props that comes after the screenplay. And pre-production is, as I heard, where a movie gets made or falls to the ground. Yeah, I would, the first two things that's really important, that's with the script. Table reads. I'm not sure if you guys know what table reads are. Well, we've heard about it. But there's two table reads. There's actually more. The more table reads you have, the better. The first one, you sit with all your crew, your HODs, the camera, wardrobe, props, um, sound, everyone that's technical. You will sit and you'll read through the script. They'll give input. You'll tell them how you see it. They'll tell you how they see it. So that's the first process. Then the other table read is the director with his actors. Don't put the actors in the table read with the technical people. The actors don't need to know about how you're going to do that and be part of that. They need to be in different spaces. So you've got to have those two table reads early on. And then when you get close to shooting a film, you have those table reads again. Then you have it again with your key crew and you have it again with your cast. So I would say if you have those four table reads early on two and early on uh, um, close to shooting the, the other two, then you're already syncing up as, as a crew. But don't go on set if you didn't do those how, table reads. How big, are, how big are the teams here? Um, as a two people teams, how, how big is a team? Is it a one person team? It differs, it differs from school to school. No. So the teams differ from school to school. Obviously, they don't have all the HODs and stuff like that. Um, on, on those table reads, um, I think just from my side, a little bit of advice is rehearse. Go into a space and make as if you know where to put the cameras with the actors and let them walk and talk and go through the lines, um, which is an active table read. Okay, so work with the actors. Let the director have time to work with the actors, you know, to, to get that, that picture in their mind, especially for students, which you are. Okay, the more preparation... In pre-production, the better your film will be. So the more times you do it and plan it and get all the things together together before you go to shoot, uh, the better the product will be. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yes. <laughs> so planning, planning, preparation, preparation ahead of the shooting. Yeah. I drew every single shot of my 100-minute film. My whole room was full of pictures. The roof, <laughs> everything. So every night I went to bed, I looked at my scenes. So that was it. I was dreaming the scenes. And it was, it was that nightmares. But it's, it's all that. You, you have to do any prep, anything. You make it up. Well, the thing is, creativity is, 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 like a, it is amazing. There eh? is no guideline how to prep. You just have to make it up and just do it do as much as you can yeah. before the time um one la the last question for the two of you is uh you studied screenwriting is it essential f to go and study screenwriting yes please <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like i said we don't have screenwriters in this country it's like it's the biggest problem that we have and we as directors that's the biggest f the most phone calls we get offers job offices for screenwriting um, 
because it's a very specific discipline, which you don't have to worry about for short films because I think short films are a whole different ball game. You watch short film festivals, what they've done, and you just watch short films till it, yeah, as many as you can. BFI, I've told someone else, has a great website. You go to Vimeo, wherever you can see how short films are doing, and, and then have those basic things in place for your character and for your structure. Um, but screenwriting, it's a very, very specific discipline. It's got a, a structure that's like a puzzle piece, which is so complex. That's why so few people want to do it. It's not as creative as, as, say, writing a novel that you can just write everything in. So screen, screen shots has a very specific structure that it works off if you're working in kind of commercial filmmaking. If you do want to do art house which, and not make money, for a living, that, that's a different option. But if, uh, screenwriting has a very specific structure, how it works, and then there's rules on character and how character is built. We, we spoke a little bit about it. You've heard about the three-act structure. A lot of you do theatre. Um, that is in there, but then screenwriting has... I can quickly talk about different things, uh, but, uh, you know, if you... If you let's say it's a 90-minute 90, 90 film. So l let me give you a quick ca crash course in screenwriting in the 90-minute film. You'll have a setup in the film. The film starts. You want to know what's your want of your character, what's the flaws. You know, they sometimes like a, think of seven things which are, is wrong with the character. How are they flawed? And then have a very strong want for your character. That And then so, like usually around 12 minutes, you can watch any film. There's something that happens between 10 and 15 minutes. Something, something hooks your story. Something happens with a character you can call it anything. Nemo swims off the yeah, gets yeah. gets caught something yes. bad happens you call it a incident that happens in this film it's, it's something that stints your entire characters oh, yes. a problem spider-man something happens and like someone tells him you need to be spider-man save the world and then the character will go through this process he's not sure what he does and then 20 minutes 30 minutes into the film the character decides cool he's going to try and go for it and then in the middle of the film, the whole story turns around again in a different direction because that's what you need to keep the audience engaged. It's called the midpoint of the film. Usually the, the character gets exactly what he, f what he wants. It's called, we call it a victory for the character. And then the whole world turns around again. It, the character is turned in. And then 75 minutes into the film, something a new hook comes in. We have different words for it. It's terrible cliche to say that now, but you, it's a low point for the character. There might be a death of something. Spider-Man might lose a, a father or uncle or something might happen or something other, and the character needs to run towards the climax of the film and, and, and you know, save the world and get the girl and kiss <laughs> and be happy. And, yes. and so that's a very cliche way. There's different ways of doing it. There's other thoughts, Hitchcock, um, started that, it's about eight sequences, so that it's, it's like as long as your film has eight sequences with a beginning, middle, of end, that can just must just have run from that initial hit to the climax of the film. So that's a different way of thinking so of it. So it sounds to me like screenwriting is very, very specific. But yeah, the wonderful thing the is there's a, lot of, there's a lot of online courses, there's AFTA, of course, there yeah. are universities, books. but there's a lot of books, so if you want to study it, um, we live in the age of the fourth revolution. Yeah. You can study it on a computer. You don't have to go yeah. to a big fancy place uh, to do screenwriting. Yeah. Guys, we're going to... With that, yeah, I, just, I really have to say that if you do learn the structure, it, it gets to... That's why we, we don't want to always just create stories that's similar. Then only can you learn to break structure. So I'd like, get the knowledge like anything else. You can't be accountant if you just don't know. Just... Just do it. You don't have to follow the exact structure that I am told. Like there's different mm. variations of just, just do your research and learn and study it first and then break, learn to break it. Great. Listen, we're going to get some questions from our finalists. Um, are there any questions um, for the Van Royens? Yes, please. Hi, I have a question for you. You mentioned something about dyslexia. How, how did that impact your career choice that you are pursued? Weirdly, I first studied to become a financial manager. Um, but the thing is, because I didn't know that I can tell stories visually, you know, it's, I thought stories always had to be stand in front of the class and you read your story out loud and it's, it was really hard for me. And 
and I always m was made fun of in school. The first time I wrote, I wrote from um, right to left. And, and everyone gets their books sent around when they r write amazing stuff. So one day my book gets sent around. And I didn't realize that I wrote from r right to left. And then I was actually just laughed at. So what movie making for me is, I, have, I can tell stories using visuals and don't have to um, write in words. So I think dyslexia for me was, I had to rely on being visual mm -hmm. and <laughs> not use words, yeah. um, written words. So it, it made me just a very strong uh, visual director um, and writer. Because I didn't realize that I can write a script and don't have to be so descriptive. I can just say the guy sits down and this is what he says. This is, uh, no, that's it. I can write a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you. And I give it to someone else to help me spell check. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, the, the industry is uh, amazing in terms of if you have a story, if you can tell stories, there's a way to do it. Next. Um, I wanted to ask, if you are writing the screenplay and directing, when do you realize that you're killing your script or does it just come from feedback from other people on the set? Well, that, yeah, I don't know. That's such uh, a good it's, question. It's, <laughs> no, it's true, because it's uh, in my third year and, and after I, I killed my script and I actually won the award for best writing and I broke my award afterwards because I felt so, but be I betrayed myself. Um, so I don't know. I actually, I you think um, you've, You've got to find that belief in yourself that you're doing the right thing, and that, um, and that, you know, f the biggest thing is the audience just need need to love the character, um, in, in the end of the day. But it's you can because I what happened is I really wanted to make the best movie that year. I wanted to be amazing, and I wanted to be the best, and I listened to everyone and everyone's ideas was amazing and I put everyone's ideas into a s the script and the first one I wrote was actually the one I should have made and then I made this about abalone poaching and it was gangster and what action driven and the one I actually wrote was just a fairy tale and I wanted to actually the thing is you you always there's this society and this idea when you write that you want to be amazing and I think that is the biggest problem, is that you, you have that conscious that someone's going to judge you, and someone's going to look at it, and someone's going to love you, and someone's going to cheer. And if you can take all that out and just write, um, then you know you're doing the right thing. Yeah, I, I actually, that's a, it's such a good question, and I think that's the, the, that's the biggest thing. If you're going to write it because you want to win something, What's, it's going to happen. You might get a little bit self-indulgent, or your focus is going to. Sit. So if you and, and a lo uh, if you're going to write just because you want to tell a really good story, you want to engage people, it will c come from a truer place than wa wanting acclaim and awards yeah, and I things. Won, which but, I wasn't really <laughs> but that is <laughs> right. and and and, a, and the lucky thing is that's why short films are so awesome. Is that we have both had those experiences. In sh in our sh uh, while doing short films and it had a very traumatic <laughs> effect on us both and yeah. and from that experience we just started like firstly just researching a lot on screenwriting and now we've gotten to that point that we don't have that that fear anymore and you you uh, that's about anything creative whether you do a op style for school or anything you know it's it's learning learning when you can let go and trusting yourself but but the big thing is just where is this where are you writing from? Why are you telling a story? Why do you want to be a filmmaker? If you want to go to Hollywood, it's probably not going to happen. It has to have come from a place of, you know, I want to tell good no. stories and entertain audiences. Or don't write yeah. for the audience. Or don't it's write for the awards. Or the, yeah. 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 You've got to find that in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So to win, you have to try not to win. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That that is very interesting. <laughs> you can win it anyway, but you'll be unhappy. <laughs> be truthful to yeah. yourself. Yeah. Uh, so, question in in your experience, uh, what works better when uh, the story is plot driven versus character driven? 
Very good question. Um, so you were back in the day, <laughs> not so long ago, but a plot was very important. And what I describe now is of an uh, plot. So a plot was very important, but audiences have, have become so used to structure and plot that they, it becomes predictable. So stories have changed a lot, especially because of series towards m more character-driven stories. Even your super superhero stories th uh, these days are like cre creatively character-driven because it's less predictable. So from my side, that's that's your number one thing. It's really understanding what your character wants, the flaws, and what's in standing in his way. Um, um, plot plot is actually structure, and, and, and unfortunately, it becomes cliche and predictable. Um, not that it's not important, but yeah. Yeah, both. You can't. I would say some people start with the plot when they st start a story, and then some people start with character. But at the end of the day, if you're going to start with a character, you're going to have to bring plot later. Um, so it's the one just comes before the other one. It's not really more important. Um, it's just disguised better sometime in a, in a film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would. You can't. You can't have a movie. You can't have food without the plate. I mean probably can eat it from the floor. <laughs> but it's basically going to be that. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. And then you, and then you. Okay. How would writing a script differ for um, something like a music video where the characters don't have any lines? That's the same thing. It's a script is it's, it's visual. It's better. I would say if you can write your script of un, any out any lines and still tell the story, it's you know, it's good. But a music video, it's, it's so many different things. Some music music videos are stories. You know, it's the whole stories and there's dialogue because there's the guy singing, so there is lines. Um, but other music videos are just mood pieces. It's a mood. It's a feeling. Um, so it's, it's, it's different. So music videos can just be a feeling. You just write a feeling. <laughs> but you still need a, a script. It's just different. But, um, but I would say narrative, if you're going to tell a story, you know, it's all the same. If I can just respond on that question, um, if you're doing a music video, some of you are, um, like, uh, like you said, there's two different ways. If you think about the song Happy um, by... Oh. Yes, Fer Pharrell Williams. That whole music video was about people being happy and dancing. So that was the purpose of the song was yeah. to be happy. And... Then there are different uh, music videos that tell a story, and I, th and I think of Adele's new uh, music video. So when the artist wants to tell something personal about their lives, but as you said, Kornai, visual. So in a music video, you have to communicate the mood visually, even though there are lines. So be sure what the mood is your song wants to create. And if it's a story, then the music video, the song usually tells a story as well. It has a narrative about something happened that's in someone's life. Okay. Hi. Um, so <clears throat> this question might just be a follow-up on the one about the music video, but um, my, m my movie is going to be an action movie, and I'm hoping to, um, yeah, have less actual dialogue and focus more on the action. Um, so how would that be different for an action movie? Would it? Um, is there anything else that I should take into consideration when um, you know, when I help write the script? Yeah, so uh, so whether it's, it's action, action is a genre, so you have different genres. You've got action and comedy and, uh, and all of those genres get scripted the same, but you'll see action script, you can even Google, it's all online. You'll see a lot of times it's more, as we described, the action is written out a lot more. And you'll see a lot less dialogue in those movies because it is today. But it, it's the same format. Music video is a whole different ball game because you, c you can just do it uh, visually in terms of a mood, but a action is a genre. 
as in any, any other one that needs to be um, written out. The, but sometimes in action, what, what is it called what, Titanic? Was it the Titanic that had one line, the Titanic sinks? But that was a sequence that went on for 20 minutes mm. of the Titanic sink thinking so the director had to like gr gr with his team think visually how is that moment going to translate so you can in an action movie say um ben and philip have a fight to the death that action can be written out mm. but that still means you have to think of how that sequence is going mm. to be done on set so that it, it it depends on your writer your writer can be very it can be very uh, shortly describing the scene for you you can add on to that if you want to no, it's it's exactly, like exactly that. It's just you've got to write out every single movement that you're going to see. Mm. Or, you, um, or you don't have to. You don't have to. You can say, f and a, a, a chase sequence ensues. Mm. So then, you know, a chase sequence can go on for five minutes, but you, you've got, f it's one sentence, but it's five minutes of screen time. So that's mm. not always a page. Um, yeah. So I would shoot one day, I have, we'll shoot about five pages a day, which is five minutes a day, or sometimes 10 minutes a day. Um, but if there's one line that says fight scene, I know, okay, I'm gonna shoot the whole day in that scene. So it, it's, it's, yeah. But I would say if when you're doing this, you need to make very clear for everyone in your script what you wanna see in that fight scene or don't chase do, scene. Don't and do the Titanic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they write it out. Don't For say sure. Titanic sinks. Like, be like, descriptive. <laughs> like if it was a Mission Impossible scene when um, Tom Cruise is running over the roofs and that, so you describe each time he jumps and each time yes. he, ch yeah. For, okay. for your film, definitely be more descriptive. Okay, mm. great. Thanks. It's our last question. Hi. Um, how much time do you think should be allocated for um, editing and also for editing, how do you feel about trying to wiggle things around or should everything be set in stone by then? Yeah, editing is the, it's, you have your final draft it's a script, then you shoot the script and then you rewrite your movie in the edit. So the most important thing of the edit is, is this movie going to be um, engaging and entertaining for the audience. We shuffle scenes around that was in the ending to the beginning. If it's going to make a good movie, you do whatever it's going to take. So things have changed a lot in the edit. And the nice thing about an edit is, at, and there you can change things. You can shuffle scenes around. Yeah, they you the second director as the editor. Yeah, you, you sit with your friends, let other people watch it, and there, you know, you, you can't get too lost in the story there. It's, there's just about, is the sto story going to be the best possible version of it of itself? And you try different things in the edit, yeah. You know, it becomes a whole different story there. And uh, depth, yeah. So for, for us, Feature Film World, it's, uh, we prep for three, three months, we shoot for four weeks, and we edit final mix and post-production for eight months to a year, so... Yeah, we shot a film now, and it's only going to be coming out next year, end of next year. So, so editing that process, we gi we give the most time to. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Van Royens. It was such a privilege to have you here, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, let's give them a, a nice round of applause. <laughs> Okay, just all of you what, that have watched this movie, please make sure to watch all of the shop talks. Go watch our uh, uh, education videos from last year, and we're looking forward to uh, let us know how it goes.